Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, okay, there we go. Welcome to Beautiful Savior, especially any visitors we have with us this morning. It is wonderful to have everyone here today. Everyone's in a very talkative mood. That's not a bad thing. But you should listen to the announcements. Uh, a couple quick announcements from me. Uh, first of all, um, thank you for everyone who came out to the conference yesterday. Uh, we had a great time. It was a great conference. Uh, there were really fantastic presentations about uh, all, all sorts of things. But um, the overall theme was stewardship in the later years of life. Uh, teach us to number our days as Psalm 90 teaches us. Um, and we talked about end of life decisions. We talked about funeral planning. Uh, we also talked about uh, financial stewardship uh, with estate planning and uh, some ways that we can use IRA accounts specifically, um, but um, all of our kind of investments to serve God's kingdom. Uh, so thank you for everyone who came out to that. The videos were recorded for the presentations. They were recorded. Um, and so I'll be editing together a video for that and getting that out to you. Um, if you could not make it, uh, LCEF, uh, who came and uh, all the way from St. Louis to teach us some of the things they taught us, um, they left us these books about aging and aging well and uh, what it looks like to age according to God's word. So um, there is a stack of these books, Resilient Aging Wellness, on the back table uh, over there in that corner. Uh, so if you would like one of those, uh, feel free to pick one of those up. Um, first come, first serve. Second of all, the October Messenger uh, is now available. It is printed at either entrance of the church and also in your email inbox. Uh, so a lot of good articles and things in there. Be sure to pick one of those up. Uh, third of all, Midweek Ministry. Midweek Ministry is our Wednesday night ministry that we have started here at Beautiful Savior. It has been very successful. It's been wonderful. Uh, if you have not come to it or if you have come to it before, you should come back and you should come to it. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for fellowship uh, with one another and for Bible study. Uh, we have a meal at 530 p.m., which uh, Annie has been graciously catering. And it's a free will offering. So um, if you want some free food or if you want to give a little bit of money for for your, for your meal on Wednesday night, just come. The, the food's prepared. The food's ready. Uh, it's, it's good to go. So, um, And we've had some really good meals. They've all been very excellent. So uh, come and join us for a meal at 5.30. And then at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday nights, we have Bible study. We have Bible study for both adults. We're studying the book of Revelation, which is a ton of fun. And then uh, two Bible study classes. Uh, one for little kids, uh, nursery kids, and then one for the bigger kids uh, as, as they gather together around God's Word as well. So uh, please, all, all ages, come join us on Wednesday nights for Midweek Ministry. It's a great program. Um, I, I've been very, very pleased so far with how it's turned out. So please join us for that. Um, I know some people have asked about giving money for disaster relief for the hurricanes. Um, and the really the easiest place to do that probably, uh, you can go to the district website um, and they have a place to give. Uh, you can also just go to lcms.org slash give now slash disaster. And uh, that'll go to the LCMS disaster relief team um, who will direct it to the appropriate spots um, I'm very good friends with the pastor who works very closely with the disaster relief team. And um, that's where he said makes the most sense to just send the money and then um, it'll go to the uh, chainsaw teams and to the people who are making um, sanitary, uh, what are they called, sanitation packages or whatever. Um, so anyhow, if you want to give to disaster relief, that's, that's probably the easiest place to give and that's in the announcements in your bulletin. Uh, finally, and I forgot to grab one for myself, um, but finally there should be a insert in your bulletin today. 
Thank you. There should be an insert in your bulletin today that looks like this. It's front and back, and it says, At Home Stewardship Study. Uh, so I decided to switch things around a little bit this year, and we're not doing, we're not going to do pledge cards this year. Uh, but what I would very, very highly encourage you to do, um, I'm telling you, you should do this in case that wasn't clear enough. You should take this home, and uh, it's a simple six-step little sheet. Uh, the first step is to study what God's Word says about stewardship, and there's some Bible passages there for you. The second step is to receive God's gifts. The third step is to pray. The fourth step is to consider what God does in the church. The fifth step is to examine yourself, and there's a list of yes or no questions for you to go through for yourself there. And the sixth step is to decide on your proportion uh, for what you'd like to give to the church in the following year. And um, I think it is um, very important that you do this because, very simply said, stewardship is part of the Christian life. Uh, God's Word talks clearly about stewardship and about financial giving to the church. And um, this is something that, if you are a faithful Christian, which I believe everyone in here is, then uh, you should not be afraid of. It should not be something that's scary to you. Uh, read God's Word. Let God's Word do to you what it says. Um, and uh, fill this out. Consider these things. They are important um, for the church, of course, but also for your own spiritual benefit. Your own spiritual benefit. Um, so I'm going to have these in the bulletins the next four weeks um, to give you ample time to make sure that you give one and you have time to fill it out. Uh, make sure uh, that you take it home and study and fill it out. Don't turn it back into me. It's for you. Okay, this is for you. It's for your own spiritual benefit. Uh, you don't have to turn it into me. And uh, just uh, go ahead and study that. Study God's word and see what it says about that topic. With all of that said, sorry for all the announcements. Today, uh, we are actually going to have a little bit of a stewardship Sunday. And the uh, sermon today is going to be on the gospel reading from Matthew 22, the, kingdom, the parable of the kingdom of the wedding banquet. And we're going to be talking about how our relationship with Christ is like that of a wedding or a wedding feast. And we'll be talking about how that relates to what I like to call whole life stewardship. Whole life stewardship. So be on the lookout for that in the readings. And with that said, God's blessings on your worship.
The Lord is righteous in all that he has done to us, for we have not obeyed his commandments. Glorify your name, O Lord, and heal with us according to your great mercy. The Lord be with you. And with Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks.
take us a lesson is from Ephesians chapter 5. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to the God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, as many as the highways, as many as you can find, and invite them to the wedding. So those servants went out in both the highways and gathered together all who they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness, for there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. stewardship, specifically financial giving to the church, about once a year, one special Sunday a year we call Stewardship Sunday, and to be completely honest, not many people like that. If I announce it ahead of time, notice I did not announce it ahead of time this year, then the attendance would be lower than it is. <laughs> That's just a fact. Yesterday's conference, which I thought was excellent and had many great presentations and great speakers, was much lower attendance 
Disappointing to me, yes, to be straightforward, much lower attendance than the evangelism conference have. People don't like to talk about money, or in terms of yesterday's conference, people don't like to talk about their own death either. But surprise, today's Stewardship Sunday, and so we are going to talk about it a little bit. But I want you to put the idea of stewardship and tithing and the things that you normally think about on Stewardship Sunday, how much you're going to put on the form that you fill out when you go home and you do the at-home stewardship study, which I encourage you to do. I want you to kind of put that normal stewardship stuff, quote unquote, out of your mind, at least in a sense. Because for this sermon, at least, for this Stewardship Sunday, at least, I don't want you to think about money so much. I want you to think about a wedding. After all, that's what Jesus talks about in the Gospel for today. And that is the text which we will speak of. The kingdom of God is like a man who arranged a wedding feast for his son. Now, we know that the son is Jesus Christ. That the master is the father. And the father arranges a wedding for his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus' bride is none other than the church. This is revealed to us many places in Scripture. Ephesians 5 is a good place. So Jesus is the bridegroom and we are the bride. And what is a wedding all about? If the kingdom of God is like a wedding, what is a wedding all about? Well, in many ways you can think of a wedding as the culmination of two people's whole entire lives joining together. At a wedding, you will see set up baby pictures and pictures from the person growing up and all that they did for both the bride and the groom, and then pictures of them together. You will see family members from both of the bride's side and the groom's side. You will see co-workers and church members from both sides. And both sides will, of the family will spend a lot of money on the wedding and many gifts will be given and received. And people will eat together and drink together and wear special clothes. And the couple will go home to a new home together. And notice how encompassing a wedding is of every aspect of life. Food and drink, clothing and shoes, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that we have goes into a wedding. And so if the church is the bride of this great wedding feast and Christ is the bridegroom, then we should become one in the same way. We should receive with joy all of the whole life of Christ, all of his blessings, all of his gifts, his family, his food, everything that he brings with him to us as a bride does for her groom. His love for us, his washing us and making us pure in baptism where we receive the wedding garment, his giving us a great feast in the Lord's Supper, his connecting us with his divine family where his father adopts us as his own children. It is very much like a wedding. But then we should, as the bride of Christ, the church as the bride of Christ, should share with him in all the gifts that we have to bring. Our whole lives, our family, our wealth, our food and drink, our clothing and everything that we have, we share back with the one 
who has called us to become one flesh with him. Everything in life, that whole list of things from the time you were a baby and had baby pictures taken to the time you were married and had wedding pictures taken to the time when your body will be put into the grave, everything in life, every single aspect of it, your family, your food, your wealth, your clothes, everything in life has come from God, has come from the master who threw the wedding, has come from the master who created all things and has given you to be stewards in his creation. We are stewards, managers of all these things that he has given us. In the same way that on that day when two get married, they are stewards for all of their family and friends of the great feast being thrown with all the things involved. And so if we use that analogy and think about everything in life, not just money I, and think about something joyous like a wedding, it makes Stewardship Sunday a little bit easier. And we can call it this whole life stewardship. Whole life stewardship. Not just time, not just talents, not just treasures, but whole life stewardship. And if you think about us as the bride being married to the bridegroom Christ, whole life stewardship is simply this. It is simply receiving Christ's gifts with joy and then doing with them what he asks us to do. First of all, we receive Christ's gifts with joy undistracted by the cares of this world. And this is where we get a little bit more into the parable. For there were many who were invited to be part of the wedding. There were many who were invited to put on the wedding garment and become the bride of Christ. But when initially asked, when initially invited, many, and Jesus here is referencing the Israelites who had fallen from the faith, but it can apply to us too. Many just reject the invitation. When invited, one goes off to his farm. He is too busy trying to provide food and clothing and money for himself that he does not receive Christ's gifts with joy. And so the message for us there is do not withhold your gifts. Do not withhold being part of this great wedding feast just because you think it's up to you to provide. The farmer thought that he could provide his own food, his own clothing, his own money, his own bodily needs by farming. But in doing so, he was not able to receive the gifts of Christ. He did not go to the wedding where greater food and greater clothing and greater gifts would be given. And so trust in the one who says... Look at the birds of the air. I provide for them. Look at the lilies of the field. I provide for them. How much more do I love you? And will I give you bountifully and provide for you all of your bodily needs? And we receive Christ's gifts with joy, undistracted by the cares of this world. Also, learning from the man who goes off to his business. The one who goes off to pursue wealth and fame and growth for growth's sake. Like the rich man who built bigger barns. He is distracted by a different kind of care of the world. And none of us are immune to that either. None of us are immune to the greed that can come with mammon. 
to the greed that can come when we pursue wealth and fame over Christ. And so it is absolutely true, yes, giving to the church of every aspect of your life in a very worldly sense will make you less wealthy, less famous, less wise. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. The wealth and fame of this world are passing away. And finally, we learn that there were those who did not attend the wedding feast because they became angry at God for inviting them. Maybe they had suffered because of God or suffered because of Christ or they heard what Christ had to say to them about how to live their life and how to be a faithful Christian and they just thought that was too much or too hard. And of course we see that outside the church, that people get angry at God and reject Him, like those here who rejected them to the point of killing His servants. But also inside the church as well, we should always be on the lookout. We who were initially invited may fall whenever persecution comes. We may find out what's really required of us to maintain our faith if things in the world get worse or we go through some kind of major suffering in our life and we may be tempted to become angry at God and walk out on Him. But count the cost. Realize what is required of you and be faithful unto death. And he will give you the crown of eternal life. And so first we are undistracted by the cares of this world. But then we continue to receive Christ's gifts with joy. Because we also know that he has called us unworthy as we are. Whenever those who reject Christ's initial invitation do not come, Jesus says, I don't care. I want my wedding banquet to be filled. So go out and find whoever you can that will listen. Go out to the highways and the byways and find both bad and good and bring them in. And that is what Christ has done for you. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. And no matter where you were in life, when you came into his church, when you became a Christian, whether you were a little baby that was baptized and you've been here ever since, or if you had fallen away for many years and you came back in your adulthood, or maybe you had never grown up a Christian and now you are one. I know all of those things apply in this building right now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you were, who you were, how you were before Christ found you. He found you. We are not worthy to be called his stewards. We are not worthy to be managers of all the gifts that he showers upon us. We were sinners. We are poor, miserable sinners. And yet he has died for us. Yet he has forgiven us. Yet he showers us with his gifts. And we receive those with joy, unworthy as we are, and steward them according to his word. And that is the final thing, that we take seriously his word. So first of all, he invited some who rejected him, and then he invited many who did come. But even of those who came, there were still those who did not take seriously his word. When the king came in, he said, 
to the one who had no wedding garment, friend, why do you have no wedding garment? Bind this man hand and foot and throw him out where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that sounds extreme, but the wedding garment is the garment of baptism. It's the garment of Christ. And that man had clearly rejected Christ, even though he was in the church, even though he had come in to the feast, he clearly rejected Christ. And so we are called when we have this wedding with Christ, when we receive all that Christ has to give to us as a groom gives to his beloved bride, we are called to receive those gifts with joy and use them as they were meant to be used. To wear the garment of baptism with pride. To be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And thanks be to God that we do often use His gifts according to His Word. The fact that you are here in church today on Sunday morning when his word is being preached and his sacraments are being administered, you are using your time how God wants you to use his time. That is a blessed thing. And I know many of you do many blessed things throughout your days and weeks. You serve God. You love your family. You take care of your loved ones. You come to church. You serve your community. You work hard in your vocations. You help the church when the church needs help. But let us remember this. Whole life stewardship. God is a jealous God. He doesn't just want part of your life or parts of your life or 90% of your life. He wants all of it. And so, we should give him all of it. Maybe we do very good with time and talents, but not so good with treasures. Or maybe we do great with treasures, but not so good with time. Again, I don't really like time, talents, treasures anyway, because it's even bigger than that. God wants our whole lives to serve Him. And so, repent. If there is any area in your life where you are not serving God, repent. That's what he wants of you. And turn to him. Put on the wedding garment. Remember your baptism. And receive Christ's gifts with joy. Whole life stewardship is nothing else than receiving Christ's gifts with joy and using them according to his word. And he has given you gifts. He has given you gifts beyond measure. He has given you wealth beyond measure, family beyond measure, friends beyond measure, church beyond measure. He has given you, even more importantly than that, mercy and grace, forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. What else can you ask from him? To him be all the honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
One quick uh, announcement I forgot before the uh, service. The last hymn, the last two stanzas of the last hymn are not printed in the large print bulletins. So if you have a large print bulletin, feel free to grab a hymnal for the last hymn or just follow along to the best of your ability. But we will sing all six stanzas of the final hymn. So the large print bulletins just have are missing the last two stanzas. So just so you're aware. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, we are our prayers. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, we are our prayers. Preserve our nation in justice and honor that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the governor and legislator of Mississippi. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Be also with our first responders and those who serve in our military, especially Andrew, Nicholas, Ashlyn, Terry, Katie, Mitchell, Kevin, Austin, Mark, Reese, and Blake. Lord, in your mercy, your let your blessing remain upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands in a useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all, all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Ed in Georgia, Christine, David, Peggy, Rose, Jackie, Dan, Whitney, and Autumn. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and bring to all the measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Upon you and give you peace. Oh. 